Let's see if some people join on. Yeah. Say hello as you pop on. So I know you're here. If you're watching this on replay, say hey and let me know you're watching on replay. Oh, -hoo. hey, Kayla and Sherry. Okay, good. We're starting to get a few people coming on. Say hey when you pop on. Hey, Amanda. Oh, good. Six people. All right. Good job, girls. Hey, Stephanie. I can see some of your names popping up, but say hey just in case I don't see you. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Jerry. Hi, girl. Okay, so what I am going to show y'all is how I package a door hanger using these free priority mailing boxes that I get from USPS, the post office. Um, so if you're in VIP, then you have probably seen Bethany do this. This is her method. Um, and how she like did hers and so that's how I learned how to do mine and then I also have a box like Tiffany uses um, so I'm just gonna like just show y'all what those are like too but this is like the free way so basically you pay for tape and if you want to do little cards uh, business cards or like information cards I think those are always important so this is my little information card. And I'll try to post an actual picture of it, but I just made this on Vistaprint. And it says my business name. And then thank you for ordering. I hope your design has arrived safely and as you expected. If there are any issues, please email me. And then I have my email address. If you are happy with your order, I'd love for you to like my business page and share a picture of it displayed on your door. And then I have my Facebook business name on there. Um, I was going to put my Etsy business name, but Etsy doesn't like give me like a solid, just Etsy URL. So I was like, well, Facebook's pretty universal. And then I've got my Etsy link on there. And then my business cards are just kind of standard, um, with all my information and they match. So I have a theme basically is that little paint splatter for my business, um, and just keep it universal so that they know when they see my stuff coming, like that's mine. Um, and then I also make these on PowerPoint, literally just like super basic, um, just like a Word document. But it's got my return address. Y'all don't tell nobody where I live. I'm just kidding. I'm in the book. <laughs> Everybody gets so protective over their address. And I'm like, you can literally look it up. Um, and then this big white space right here is where... I put their address and stuff. Um, so usually I will type their name and address in um, at work and then just print off a copy and bring it home. But for this girl, I haven't. So I'm just going to, I'll write it in with a marker. So these are just fun. I mean, you can write the address in on the box. It's not a big deal. But I just like having this fun little extra and then it says thanks for your order at the bottom. And I usually wrap fragile on it and that kind of stuff. So, um, the important part of this whole demo, can everybody hear me? Let me know if you can't hear me or if anything's, hey Larissa, um, or if anything's like wonky as far as like, it looks good on my end, but I don't know what it looks like on y'all's. So, <laughs> my hair looks rough, y'all. Hold on. I'm just going to put it back in the ponytail because this is getting on my nerves. Okay. So... I'm doing this as soon as I get home from work before I get into my paint clothes so that I actually look like a decent human being for y'all. So these boxes are the priority mailing boxes. And, you know, they come where you can like fold them down and, you know, ship them like an actual box. But we're not doing that. We're gonna leave them flat. And the cool part about these boxes and people don't even realize this, is that you can get them absolutely free. I have probably a stack of 150 sitting in my guest room right now. You order them in boxes of 10 or 25. Um, oh, Larissa, not tonight. I'm just, I'm not in the mood to, to paint love. 
to be honest. It's it's that girl time, and I'm just I'm in a mood. Um, but I wanted to do this video because I promised y'all that I would, and I gotta pack up this door hanger anyways. So, um, but these boxes you order directly on the USPS.com website. You, for the most part, can't go into the post office and get these boxes. They are mailing boxes. That's key. Say, say it to yourself. Mailing box. Not the flat rate box. If you walk into the USPS and you've wrapped your door hanger in a flat rate box, you're going to pay $18 to ship it. No, 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 no. We ain't doing all that. So make sure that you get the mailing boxes. If you look in files, I'm pointing over there, I don't know if that's the right direction to go look at files. Um, go to files, scroll down, and find the, I think it's the supply list, um, tribe supply list, I think. Um, and I have them linked. I have the actual direct link to the USPS website where you can order the boxes. They're free. They, you have to add them to a cart and check out, but they're absolutely free. You don't pay a dime. And they deliver them to your front porch. It's so nice. I love it. Um, so these are, where's the size of these? 12 by 12. Um, that's if they're like made into an actual box. But because they're not made into an actual box, they're a little more rectangular. Um, but I say they're roughly 24 inches by 24 inches, give or take a little, um, when they're laid flat. So, most of your standard door hangers will kind of fit. I like my door hangers a little bigger than, um, like, right at 20. Sometimes they're like 25 inches or so. Um, this one is not going to fit perfectly but that's okay because i'm going to show you the solution to that and once you add um bubble wrap this is optional but i recommend it just for like protecting the paint i don't necessarily think bubble wrap is going to protect it from breaking because i'll tell you if usps postal service guy decides he's going to chunk your door hanger box into the back of his truck and chunk another thing on top of it, it's going to break and you can't really do anything about it. You file a claim, they'll send you your money back. It's the whole process. Maybe we'll do a video on that one day. But the bubble wrap for me, I just do one layer on top mostly just to kind of protect the paint because um, I don't want it getting wet or damaged in transport. So I just kind of like to cover it. But mailing boxes, mailing boxes, not flat rate boxes. The link should be in files, go to the supply list. They should be linked in there somewhere. If not, I'll hook you girls up and give you the exact link. They also make tiny boxes. And this is the small mailing box. And if you notice, it says on there mailing box, okay? Mailing, you don't want flat rate. Oh, yeah, Larissa girl. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I don't use UPS because it is too, I've tried it and they want to double the price to mail a door hanger from UPS. So, nope, get out of there with that. Postal service isn't always the best, but they're the cheapest and 90% of the time, 95% of the time, maybe more than that, um, it gets there fine and we don't have an issue. I've had three, I've had three in a year that have been damaged. Two of them were pineapples and pineapples just don't ship very easily. That's understandable. One of them was a Yeti and it had a little light bulb and the light bulb broke off. Luckily the girl didn't care and she was fine and she was like, I don't want you to remake it. I love this one, blah, blah, blah. But if they do, you file a claim, it's not a big deal. They give you your money back. That's why you mail it priority though, because you get $50 insurance. And as long as you've got pictures of the damage, then they'll send you a $50 check within usually a week, week and a half of you filing the claim. So, um, okay. So a little box, if you're doing like attachments or 
clipboards, anything like that, get you a pack of these little boxes too because they're just nice to have on hand. Um, I use these. These are a perfect fit for my clipboards that I mailed for teachers and stuff this year. So love those. And then this is the box that Tiffany uses from Walmart. So can you see? Can you see? Um, this is the extra strength small, or I think they just have like a normal small. It doesn't necessarily have to be the extra strength, but these are 14 by 14 dimensions. If you see here, Derp, there we go. Um, oh, I'm shooting y'all a bird. <laughs> um, so that will give you roughly about 28 inches of door hangers to mail. So th if you got a bigger piece, definitely go splurge the 72 cents and buy these boxes. They're sturdier too. And Tiffany has, has had three, two or three breaks in 10 years. So clearly these boxes do hold up better, but they're like bigger. And so you can run into running, going to the post office with these and them trying to charge you the like oversized package because I think anything over 26 inches is considered oversized and they have tried twice now to charge me oversized price um, when I use this box. I can usually talk about, I mean, I have talked them out of it because they'll ship it anyways. And then if it is over, if it gets there and they say it's overpriced, the customer just has to pay the difference. And it's a risk I'm willing to take. But I use these if I'm doing, if I'm shipping multiple door hangers, if I'm shipping three door hangers, I definitely get these bigger boxes. Um, so this is the extra strength small, or just you can use the normal strength small. Um, from Walmart. They just, my Walmart doesn't have these most of the time. Like, they're 72 cents, and I think people, this is what people pack stuff with. So they rarely, mine rarely ever has these. Um, I think Tiffany has the hookup at her Walmart with her people, and I think they get theirs in like bulk. But I love my little free boxes. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our door hanger. This is one of Tiff's designs. And the customer wanted me to paint it black, so I charged her an extra $5. Easy money, people. <laughs> I don't advertise that I paint them black, but if they want me to, I will. But I do charge extra because I risk messing up the front design, trying to paint the back. So they pay a little extra for it. Um, had I not painted the back black, I would have taped my business card to it. Somewhere on here, I just slap it on there and throw some tape on it. But because she wants it black, that tells me that she wants this to go on her, like, like a glass door or something. Um, and nobody wants somebody's business card taped to something that someone's going to, like, walk up and see from behind. So, um, I'll just include my business card and my little thank you card just in the packaging. So, um, we got our door hanger. I will most of the time, hey everybody, y'all say hey when y'all come on and ask any questions um, as we go. We're covering how to ship door hangers in these free boxes. Um, if you're just hopping on, you can watch the replay when I'm done and um, hopefully I've covered most of it. But if not, ask me questions. Um, I will typically, I hope y'all can see. Um, I will kind of fold my wire down. Sometimes I fold it towards the front. Sometimes I fold it towards the back. Sometimes I don't fold it. Like this one's pretty level with like this straw here. Hey, Robin. Hey, Janie. Hey, Rachel. I gotta squeeze in real close to see what everybody says. Um, but for this one, I'm just gonna fold it back. And it doesn't. Like, literally, I've not had one person ever complain that the wire was folded. Like, they get it, they know, to fold it upwards. I mean, and this wire is pretty forgiving, and it's real easy. So, um, take this, and then I'm going to take some bubble wrap. And like I said, bubble wrap is optional. Um, Tiffany and them do not bubble wrap that I, like, last time I heard them tell about it. Um... But they also ship in these bigger boxes, and I think there's just less, like, room for damage. Um, 
But I order my bubble wrap on Amazon and like giant rolls and it's pretty, it's pretty inexpensive. Um, of course, I'm not shipping in the quantities that Tiffany is either. So it's a little more, little more affordable um, for me right now. Eventually, we might change things up. The money I spend on bubble wrap is probably what I'd spend on buying this big box, but then I don't want to take the chance and the risk of having to pay that um, oversized package fee either. So, like I said, I only try to use those boxes when necessary. So, uh, mm, boogers. Usually, I throw this back here and I just tape it down to the wood, but I'm a little concerned that the tape will pull off the black paint. So, I got one of these roller things, and this is the Duck brand. I hate it. Like, I mean, it's nice. I'm like, it's, I guess, kind of nice, convenient, but it, it stinks. So, I guess I'll just try to, like, fold it onto itself. Can y'all see what I did here? I just folded the bubble wrap back onto itself and taped it. I would usually tape it straight to the door hanger, but... I don't want to mess up the paint. But this is just to kind of keep it um, secure so that when I go to slide it into the box, it doesn't like squinch up because it, it will. Like when you're trying to shove it in the box, it's a new move. Shove it in the box. <laughs> It'll squish and... Um, Shelby, I pay in state. I live in Alabama. And usually to ship a door hanger anywhere in the state, it's around seven to eight dollars. Um, out of state, depending on what state, cost me approximately um, ten to twelve. I charge twelve. I charge twelve dollars shipping. Period. It don't matter where. I used to charge eight for Alabama. No, everybody pays twelve dollars shipping. Like I, I got tired of dealing with. All that nonsense so um, yeah anywhere between 8 and 12 Texas California those are gonna cost more I don't know what it is but Texas is my probably one of my biggest like states that I ship to like I ship the most to Texas um, and they cost the most to ship to so I usually will sometimes spend up to $15 uh, shipping to Texas depending on the size and the weight. Um, my Texas girls also tend to buy in bulk. So, you know, blessing and a curse because I usually end up having to ship a big box um, of two or three to Texas. But, <laughs> thanks Robin. I like to keep it fun and funky. Um, so, we've just kind of taped up the corners. I have no clue where I'm even showing y'all. Um, just taped it onto the bubble wrap itself because I don't want to mess up this black. Like I said, if I'd not painted it black, wouldn't care. I'd slap that tape right on there and it peels right off, no problem. But, um, no, girl, I do not use FedEx. I hate FedEx. I mean, I don't hate them. That's a strong word. FedEx and UPS charge way more to ship than Postal Service. So, I don't use them. Um, they're also not convenient to me to ship, like, as far as where I live versus, like, where I work. I, sh um, I go to the post office. It's, like, five minutes from where I work. Um, so, it's just more convenient for me to ship postal service. And you can't use these free boxes if you do FedEx or UPS. So, mm, eh, I just don't. They, um, I have bad experiences with them delivering stuff to me like it's a whole thing so yeah I mean for me they're just more expensive like way more expensive so I stick to UPS um it's a little cheaper it's a little more convenient and I find it works you know I have no problems with them um mine is occasionally things will get broke but they refund me and have a great claim service um UPS delivered a hundred dollars worth of party city decorations to my house and left the entire box sitting in the rain. <laughs> Rant city. And I was so furious. Like 
because my decorations were ruined. It was like plates and all this kind of stuff. And granted, Party City could have packed it like where things weren't exposed, but I like opened the box up and my party bowls were like just full of water. So annoying. But the dude didn't want to, or girl or whoever, didn't want to walk three more feet into the porch and put them under the porch. They literally just left them laying in the rain. So I filed a complaint, a claim with UPS, and that was a month and a half ago, and I've yet to hear back from them. So if you certainly can't even address my complaints, like, I'm not going to do business with you. But, okay, so I put my little card and business thing. I just slid it in here under the bubble wrap. Um, I just put that in there. So, like, when they open their package, that's the first thing they're going to see. And now we're going to take our box. And I recommend laying your box on the, the table. Or I do mine over here on the floor. But kind of eyeballing. Like, turn it around. See, like, okay, I know I'm going to have to kind of go in here catty corner. Can y'all see? Let me see if I can... Y'all ignore my kitchen. It's messy. All right. So, can you kind of see how I'm getting in there? There you go. So, see, we're just kind of looking at like, okay, that's going to kind of fit in here. And we're going to have a little hangover. Don't worry. I'm going to show y'all how to, how to treat that hangover. You just need another beer, right? I'm just kidding. I don't drink. I mean, I do drink, but not like that. Okay. So we're just gonna kind of put it in here on an angle. And you wanna take up the most space. So I don't recommend just like sliding it in here like this because then you're leaving these sides with like nothing on them, okay? You wanna fill up as much of the box as you can to help it prevent from breaking in transit. It really does make a difference. And the Postal Service people literally laugh at me every time I go in there because they're like, we've never seen anyone rig a box like you do. And I was like, oh, I got it down to a science. So, check in here. You can see I've got some more room where I can kind of like pull the design down. There we go. Get that corner right there on the edge of that box. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to take our tape. Don't worry about this hanging off over here. We're going to get to her. We're going, we're going to make sure she's covered too. Okay? And and this is a lot. seems like a lot of work and it kind of is, honestly. Like you can just throw it in that big box and be done. But if you're trying to ship for free, this is the way to do it. Or ship in free boxes. Okay? Some people don't want to deal with the hassle and they'll pay the 72 cents. But like I said, I can't easily get those boxes. Um, even at 72 cents. My Walmart just doesn't carry them. So, um, anyways, I just like having these boxes. They're on hand and you'll learn. So, and this is the biggest box that they have. They don't have a bigger box. So, if you want the free boxes, like, this is the biggest box you, the Postal Service carries. So, once you do this, kind of maneuver it. Oh, no! Oh my goodness. Y'all. Okay. This is why we do this though. We're, I'm teaching you what not to do. So don't stand it up on its end. I'm usually sitting in the floor and I can like prop it up on the floor and like hold it. Uh, make sure your business cards and stuff don't slide out. Make sure that your bubble wrap is still covering the design. Remember we don't really care about the bubble wrap except to just protect the paint so okay we're back in okay so i'm gonna put my tape down and then i'm gonna that's the thing i don't like about this tape is it is so hard to maneuver okay so kind of go all the way around the box and you want to make sure as you're doing your corners that you like push down on them like hold that down so that the tape is secure around it, okay? Now we're gonna go this direction. Hold down that, that corner like that as you put the tape around it. Hold it down flat as you keep going down. Hold down that edge 
and just kind of make a big loopy around. Now, I'm going to go ahead and secure this bottom part, but I'm not going to go, well, I guess I'll go all the way around. But, because I've still got this part out here that we're going to fix up, okay? So, hold it down, go all the way around. When you get to this side, it won't close all the way, but just do it as tight as you can get it. And lay it back down and come around. Okay, and then I like to go right down the middle a couple of times, but because our, uh, our excess is up here, just go halfway around the box, okay? I love tape. I'm going to overuse tape. That's why I buy this cheaper tape. I find it on Amazon because I don't care if I use a bunch of it. Okay, so now to fix our little part up here, okay, you got two options. Because this is just a little bit, it's just a little bit of excess, okay? I can take this smaller box, smaller free box, and I'm going to tape it onto here. So watch. Take and separate these parts, okay? So there's your opening. And slide that excess into the opening of that box, okay? And you want that to overlap. See that little part right there? You want that to overlap on the box where you're at. Yeah, we're gonna be able to cut that off. Okay, and if you look right here, you lift up the top, you see that you don't have anything poking out here. So my recommendation is to cut off this top flap, okay? Because you don't want a bunch of excess box space because that's how things get broken. So, take it off, you've done kind of your measurements, and just real quick with your scissors, just cut through. It ain't gotta be pretty, y'all. It's not gonna be pretty. And here's the thing, this box was free. I mean, granted, you know, a tree died for it, but that's okay, recycle. Uh, yes, it's all recyclable, okay? Um, and I will, I will find uses for these little scraps, too. Like, I'll use these as paint palettes and stuff. Um, so, yeah, everything can be reused. Okay? So, this way you're going to get a secure fit. Okay? So, I, I'm going to show you this. This is what I'm going to use. But I want to show you my other trick. If your design sticks out more than just that little bit, say you've got, like, this whole part, take another big box. Okay? Okay? And the fold, where this is right here, you can see, like, there's your flaps, your opening. Cut that right there, flip it around, and cut the back. And you're just going to be left with, like, this part, okay? And then same kind of technique. Like, ignore this. This part's not here. And you're just going to slide this part over and just tape. Tape like crazy. Okay, they hold up, they work, and the post office will mail them. They will look crazy, but they will ship them. Okay, so slide our little protector over our other piece, lay it down. I tell you, y'all, the funnest part is I get people all the time, like that I ship to, they literally write what a great job I package. They love my packaging and how secure everything feels, and they like that it's like bubble wrapped and packaged with care. They love my little cards. It's the little touches, okay? I swear it is. But we're creative. Like they get a package that's like this funky and they're like, whoa, that's so fun, okay? So you've got your little flaps laid over your box as far as it'll go up, hold them down and tape. And then flip it around and tape the back. Okay? I do this a couple of times. Okay? You don't even have to go all the way around with it if you don't want. Just kind of get that taped down to the original box. Pull that one over. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. I got a little off here, so this one didn't completely. So we just do it again. Voila. Okay. Now, same thing. Take your top 
opening. Boop, boop. Just take that closed. So let me flip my box and yeah. See, this tape gets all cray cray, but y'all, it's a decent price and I buy it in giant rolls and it's, so do kind of like this. And when you're over here doing this part, make sure your bubble wrap's tucked in. Tuck her into bed and squish it down and lay that tape flap over it so that it really encloses it, okay? And then do another lap around. Well, it got all tangled up. Which way am I going? <laughs> this way. It'd be better if I just cut it off the thing. Okay. So lay it down, make it go around, and lay it down. And now all your sides, I mean, Jennifer, it really, people are amazed. Like, I walk into the post office all the time, and they're like, uh, what are you shipping? I was like, human bodies. No, I'm just kidding. So, I tell them door hangers, and then they look at you like you're crazy, because people don't know what door hangers are either. But, so, yeah, you got your fun, funky little box that's got its little appendage up here, but it's lightweight. That's another thing. These boxes from Walmart are heavier. So it's gonna add more to your shipping cost. These boxers are lightweight. Um, expect, inspect your package, like see right here. I've got like just a little bit of bubble wrap showing. It's not a big deal, but I just wanna throw a little tape over that area, just in case the postal service guy is like, oh, let me leave that in the rain. All my door hangers are treated, but just in case, I don't want someone having their stuff in the rain. So you just want to make sure it's secure in all the places and just flat. It's like anywhere that it's kind of like thicker, just make sure everywhere around it is flat. So now that we have it all packaged up, I'm going to take my little sheet that I showed earlier that usually has their address on it. Um, Stephanie, I don't ship from home. So I go straight to the post office and they will measure it. Cause yeah, they look at me funky, but they measure tip to tail. So they're gonna measure the very top to the very bottom. So if you're measuring from home, measure it here to here and then here to here. Y'all, I get real funky. I'll bend in corners. Like if I got the time, like this box will be looking like the shape of the door hanger because I feel like it ships a little better that way. My pineapples, oh girl, because I've had two pineapples break, them boxes are wrapped tight around them. Um, all right, I'm trying to read, let's see, Larissa, I sent two door hangers back to back one time. Oh no. I don't know if I can see more of that comment or not. It cut off your comment, so I can't see the whole thing. But I'm assuming you had to reship the one. Um, file a complaint. If if you know that you mailed it and you have your receipt where you mailed two door hangers to an address, then you file a complaint through USPS Postal Service, and they have they do an investigation and they take it up. You know, if they feel like that person's lying, then they'll handle that with them. But I file a complaint. Like, I'm not going to be out of money. I'm more than happy to remake the design and send it back to them. Um, but Postal Service pays for it. So that's why you always need, when you file a complaint, complaint with the post office, you need to show some transaction, PayPal, Etsy, Facebook money, some physical money transaction where they paid you the amount. So you want to make sure that they paid you. Oh yeah, girl, that's what I'm saying. I don't do UPS. I don't do not deal with them. They're the worst. So I, postal service is all I use to ship. Um, unless I ship something back to Amazon and Amazon's paying UPS, then that's fine. But my stuff goes to the postal service. 
and they're they're really good about their claims so you've got to have picture evidence of the money like the transaction receipt invoice kind of thing um, for how much the item was valued at plus the cost of shipping so you have that on your receipt save all your postal receipts I mean you should save those for tax purposes but you need to have that postal receipt with tracking number um, on it and you go on to the usps.com website you file a claim I put in all the information I mean I overload them I get the if it's broke I get the customer to send me back pictures they don't get a new door hanger for me unless I get pictures of the damage because one you could be lying to me and two I have to have that to file a claim and so I just explain hey I need you to send me pictures they want pictures of the box like if at all possible pictures of the box that the item was mailed in pictures of the damage from multiple angles um, the shipping label on the box if they get a picture of that and um, then on your end the invoice and the receipt so file a claim they send me a check within a week and a half I've never had a problem with it but like I said I've shipped probably over 100 door hangers in a year and I've had three mess up so that's 97 percent not too bad so I take my little piece of paper and I just tape it anywhere on the box it doesn't really matter um, and I don't have this chick's address like right now off the top of my head so I'm just gonna take this down and then I'll write the address in later probably tomorrow when I go to the post office and remember that I didn't do it but that's literally it I mean obviously there's probably easier ways you know use the big box throw it in there ship it off you're done but if you don't want to deal with the um, the cost of buying the box and going to get the box like I said the post office sends you these boxes to your doorstep you order them in packages of 10 or 25 I'll order them in packages of 25 last time I ordered I think eight boxes of 25 way over way over what I needed but I was getting all frisky like oh I'm gonna sell 400 door hangers um don't do that math I don't know if that math was right um so yeah I have literally a guest room full of boxes but it's nice when I get ready to go ship I go in there and grab my box I usually grab two because like I said my door hangers are usually a little bit bigger than this standard box so I do a little taping and MacGyvering um, but we make it work and it's ready to ship to her tomorrow so um, I'll just add her information right here oh another big thing take my little sharpie and I write fragile all over it I've never had a box get broken that I wrote fragile on the ones that got broken I did not write um the little size box is seven by seven and that should be in the files supply list um, go in there where I think I've got shipping boxes in there um, if I don't I will send you all the links to everything um, I'll post it either in this post or I'll just make a post in the group or something I'll get you all the information so the big box is 12 by 12 the little box is 7 by 7 um, the, the 8 and the 6 the, the numbers on the end that's if you were to make it into an actual box that's the depth of the box you don't need that so um we just write fragile on everything please do not bend please be careful mind your manners you know um yes i use this is what i use ah let me find it is this it no that's my flat spray if you're making clipboards use the flat because this gloss on the clipboards did not do so well for me but I use this Krylon gloss clear crystal clear I get it at Walmart 
And then when it says like 25%, they literally will have the, this bottle and a short bottle and they're the exact same price. So I use this or I use the Rust-Oleum. Um, I use whichever one's on sale. I think they run about $4, maybe five for a bottle. Might be like $3.96 or something. I can't really remember. Shake it up, spray it on. I do like just kind of a light coat. I don't get too heavy with it. It's usually dry to touch within 20, 30 minutes. Um, I, dry, I do mine outside. I have a little setup outside. Um, I go out there and just spray them down within 10, 15 minutes. Um, I can go out there and like bring them inside. And I try to let them dry overnight. But they're dry to touch within 30 minutes or so. So, um, yeah. So, what other questions do y'all have? Since I'm actually on here and like wearing makeup. <laughs> it's a rare thing. I know, I really should do a live painting on my business page. But I'm just, ugh, so over it. Um, Y'all want to see what I did with my light fixture? Because like the last time I did a live at this table, the light fixture was literally in the way. Y'all are going to die. So, I put... A chair on my table and suspended my light fixture. Do you die? It's so funny. I was like, how do I get that light out of my face? And that's what I came up with. <laughs> and watch it literally slide and hit me in the face and knock me out. If it does, call the ambulance. Y'all have my address. Scroll back through. Um, yeah. So, thanks girls for tuning in. If y'all don't have any more questions, I'm going to sign off and go paint orders. Um, so if you're watching on replay, you got any questions, feel free to comment. Oh, Larissa, I really, I don't know. Um, I've got a lot of like custom orders and y'all, let's be real, I hate those. I hate when someone like messages me and they're like, I want da -da -da. like, no, I got 30 designs. Go pick one of those. But, you know. I don't know. I mean, I probably haven't done 100. I don't even remember. I calculated it. Um, I mean, I probably had 20, 15, maybe even orders, like, from January to, to July. Like, it was basically dead. Um, but fall definitely picks up. Um, I've had, yes, I've had 20 Etsy sales. Um, I got my 20th Etsy sale the other day. Um, hit or miss. I'm getting a whole lot of likes and favorites, which is kind of cool, but they're not all turning into sales. Um, the big thing that I think that helps me with Etsy is when I did my autism, um, puzzle piece that I did for Lauren Brazy. She's a YouTube person and she showed it on her YouTube channel and I got... 10 or 12 orders from that and I directed all of them through Etsy and so that I think helped my shop like because the, obviously the more sales you get the more they're going to show you um so I think that helped me a bunch as far as like Etsy sales but y'all I've had 20 and it's been a year like it ain't nothing compared to the numbers Tiffany's pulling but y'all that's why Tiffany's our leader you know like we just all aim to be her don't we <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of, it's ebbs and flows. I'll get crazy busy and then I'll have nothing. And so I use, when I don't have anything, I use that time to paint what I want and to do the designs from VIP or Tribe or, you know, ones I order off Etsy. Um, we got some excellent girls doing templates out there and I'm not a creative person. I'm good at logistics and like managing groups and things like that but the creative is not necessarily my strong suit so I look to those that are and use those resources for my templates and ideas and um I don't know I've had a lot of bust I can't I got a guest room full of designs that nobody bought so that's a little don't feel like you're the only one um yeah, I mean, Larissa, I just, I don't know, I don't really have any tips. I do ads, I do Facebook ads occasionally, once a month. 
I will pick a post that I feel like doing pretty decent, like people are liking it, um, and I'll run an ad on that. Um, and that gets me a lot of good response on Facebook. Um, I've got 650 likes slash followers on Facebook right now, which I think is pretty good in a year. Like, they're not all my friends. They're just people. Um, so, yeah, that's the ads help uh, doing that. It's 10, I do $10, $15 for a two, three day ad. Um, I select, go in there, and I'll try, maybe I can try and do something on how to set up an ad um, campaign. Because I believe in them. I really do think they work. And Facebook does show your page to the masses. Um, I think, yes, I have done flash sales. Um, not many, necessarily. I'm a, probably about to because I've got this ton of inventory. Um, I think if you do them too often, you hurt your business because then people are just waiting for a flash sale or waiting for a sale in general. I used to do them a lot when I sold 31 and people wouldn't buy regularly because they'd be like, well, in two months or in a month or in two days, she's going to do a sale. So why am I going to pay full price? Um, so like I have some Christmas designs from last year that I didn't sell, but when I do a sale, like probably in the next couple weeks, I'm not going to offer those because those are holiday signs and those are what people are going to want to buy for the holiday. And I'd rather them spend full price and buy my signs. So I might offer spring or, you know, summer because they're not, they have to wait till next year to use those. And so they're probably most likely, you know, they'll buy them because they'll be, you know, inexpensive, but I don't want to sell them a Christmas design and then them not buy one of my new Christmas designs. Um, but flash sales work. More targets, like not necessarily sales, but um, if I'm doing a, like I do giveaways kind of thing. I did a teacher giveaway in July, June, to announce my clipboards. Um, so I did a contest where you had to nominate a teacher. That teacher had to like my page. You had to like my page and share it. Um, and then if your teacher got nominated, um, she would go into a drawing and then I did a drawing for a clipboard and that got me some new people to my page. I did one when I, um, released my baby hanger design back in February. That got me a bunch. So, nominate a pregnant mama. You got the chance to win, you know, your baby door hanger. And that got me at least four sales on top of the free one I did. So, um, everybody says Facebook has rules, blah, 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 blah. You're not supposed to say certain words in certain terms. I've not experienced it. I've not had anybody like come after me or I haven't seen my videos not get exposure because of it. They go through that all the time. They say all the time, you know, oh, you're not supposed to do that. But, um, I haven't noticed. What is the green? Have you looked at if you're in the green on your page? What is that? I'm confused. I don't know. I guess, no, I mean, I haven't looked because I don't know. It says green when I'm active, <laughs> which is all the time. But, I don't know. What is that? Anybody else have any questions? I mean, y'all, I'm here, so. What does it mean? Are you talking about my Facebook page? Okay, yeah, shoot me a message, that's interesting. Is it Facebook or Etsy? I mean, is it as far as like sales or like, hey, you're good to go, you're a great, doing a great job? Was that, I mean, I don't know, why are they making me green? Um. I don't think in the amount of boxes I'm using that I'm going to be earthly green. <laughs> They're going to shut me down. Um, I don't know. It all, it all starts going together. You know, I'm not by far <laughs> the guru of all this information. Um, but I'm always happy to share what I do and what I think works. Um, I think... Oh, interesting. I've never noticed it. I don't know. Huh. Interesting. I don't know. I saw some girl post a thing about some girl that did like a two-hour video on the words you're not supposed to say. And now people are using like 
weird terms to mean other things. I'm like, that's bizarre. Like, if I'm going to say I'm going to offer a sale, it's a page. That's what they make us make pages for. So, that's what I don't understand. Because when I sold 31 years ago, you couldn't sell in a group. They forced you to get a page to sell in a public open page. Like, they discouraged closed groups, you know. So, now they want us to do closed groups and not pages. I can't. I can't with the rules, y'all. I just can't. Well, if you find out, I'll look, see if I can go through it again and, like, go through my page and see if I can find stuff. I mean, I'm pretty tech savvy, but I also spend a lot of time looking into it, and, like, I'll constantly go and, like, update my page, like, refresh it, give it a new kind of vibe, update my cover photo. Um, my profile picture right now is my little icon thing. Um... I don't change that. That's that's for right now. That's me. That's standard. That's what people know is my little image. Um, but yeah, I just find. Yeah, girl, I'm down. I think I can do lunch any day next week. Um, let me know. But yeah, I mean, Facebook has rules. They're always gonna have rules. You can skirt the line. I mean, it's annoying. But I do right now send everybody through my Etsy to shop. So if they want to place an order, they have to go through Etsy. That helps boost my Etsy views. So um, unless it's like just kind of a one-off thing, I'll have people message me directly and I'll let them pay me through PayPal. But I don't, um, I don't girl, I didn't design that. I paid for that. I paid 20 bucks for a guy to do that off Etsy. But um, I'll send you his info. I'll post his info in this group. I, don't, I posted it in VIP. I don't think I posted it in here. Um, his Etsy name is Hand, H-A-N-D, Mech, M-E-K, Hand Mech. I sent him, he was recommended to me by someone who was ordering planner stickers. And I was like, hey, do you do logo designs? And she was like, no. But she told me about this guy. He lives in like Taiwan or something. They're on, like, a different time. So, like, our night is their day. So, he'll message at, like, midnight. Because, which, speaking of, I should already have him. Oh, no, he sent me that. Never mind. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, he's actually done two two things for me now. Um, hand, H-A-N-D, Mech, M-E-K. But I'll send his, I'll post his stuff in the group. Um, he's great. He takes a little while. Um... Just because he's really gotten popular. Um, but, uh, that's so funny. But he's he's excellent. It's 20 bucks. He'll make you an image. You send him a picture of yourself. Um, and just kind of say, hey, I want to be wearing a paint apron. Or I want to be holding a paintbrush. Or put me in front of a door with a door hanger. Like, send him a picture. Send him, like, words. Kind of what you're looking for. And he nailed mine. Like, to the T. He even gave me a little cleavage. I was like, yes, you know me. Because in my picture that I sent, I had a little. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Um, yeah, he's great. And I paid 20 bucks and he sends me all the digital files for it. Um, so it was awesome. So that's who did mine. Um, and literally, I think probably 20 people have used him since I recommended him. So he's good. Um, okay, I think I'm going to sign off. I need some dinner. And it's probably some chocolate. So, um, let us know if you find out where that thing is. If not, I'll let y'all know. I'll send post links to the boxes and any other thing I can think of. Probably tomorrow because I'm tired right now. <sighs> Life. You would think I had kids. I'm going to have kids this weekend though. So, I need to go to bed early. You are so welcome, Stephanie. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks, Larissa. Thanks for all your good questions and info. Me and Larissa could talk for days, y'all. We'll never get off here. Me and her, we, we're Gabby girls. Yeah, hit me up about lunch. I'm down. Anybody else in the Huntsville, Alabama area, let me know. We can do lunch. I'm down. I'm originally from Corner. I used to live where Tiffany lives. Um, we went to high school together. But I, re I literally haven't seen her in years. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. We go way back, girl. Um... Yeah, but it's so funny. Like, I have been by her house three times 
um, in the last year, and every time, like, she's not there. So, I, like, just pick up what I need or leave what I'm leaving her. Um, so, y'all, y'all let me know. If you're in the area, we'll go to lunch, hang out, hit me up, girl. You know, I'm dying to be official besties. Okay, I gotta go. I'm tired. Love you girls. Thank y'all so much for sticking with Tribe. It was such a good group. Tiffany, Tiffany and I really, really appreciate the support and the love. And there's killer stuff coming up. Um, she's really taking, like, she asked me the other day for the list from our live that we did a couple weeks ago um, of what y'all were wanting to see. And um, so she's coming up with some good stuff. I'm super excited. This is our busiest time, y'all. If this is your first year kind of doing the business of door hangers, it's strap on. Ooh, that sounded bad. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know what three people are still watching, but just ignore that last comment. <laughs> it's just meant to put your seatbelt on. Strap in. That's what I meant. Ah! Okay. Tiffany's going to never let me go live in here again. She's like, you are banned from <laughs> speaking to me. 